How you doing, everybody? I'm Chris Pirate, an artist um, commissioned by the mayor and DSLBD to create a project and a piece with some of my favorite artists from the area um, to really celebrate our efforts towards statehood. And I just want to say I've, I'm from here. I was born here. I was raised out here. And I've since left to kind of like find an art career in New York, Miami. And it's great to come back here and see art celebrated and art being used to push a conversation forward. And so I'm happy to really come back here and get this opportunity and also get the opportunity to work with some of my favorite artists out here. Jamila, Diego, Pize, Kiana, Mensa, Timby, we'll trap Bob. And um, Ricasso, and it's just been amazing. It's been an awesome time, and I want to thank the mayor and give her a chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are happy to be here during uh, D.C. Statehood Week with Director Christy Whitfield and Chris, whom you've heard from. Uh, with a number of D.C. artists, uh, and these artists participated in a very successful art all night in all eight wards in Washington, D.C. So let's give them a hand and thank them for their support. Uh, you might uh, have seen yesterday that we went before Congress, uh, and uh, our Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Dorton led a hearing. Uh, I attended with the D.C. Council and thousands of D.C. residents in making our voice heard about statehood for Washington, D.C. And today we are celebrating another unique art event in the district. We're called, uh, it is Parking Day, and this annual event gives district residents and businesses the opportunity to display their creativity by transforming curbside parking spaces into pop-up pop parks. Today, uh, at a park installed by the downtown D.C. Business Improvement District, is centered around urban agriculture. It's a fun way to rethink public spaces. And this event couldn't be timelier on the heels of yesterday's statehood hearing when uh, one of our Republican critics objected to statehood in representation for 700,000 people um, because of his fear that it could interfere with parking for Hill staffers. Um, we know that there is no re constitutional right to parking, and it should certainly not usurp the rights of D.C. residents to equal protection under the law. And residents we know feel the same way. So today we are in uh, unveiling an interactive piece of art that showcases the notes and comments of thousands of D.C. residents reflecting what statehood means to them. Yesterday, we took these messages to Congress, letting them know that 86% of D.C. voters voted for statehood in 2016. Uh, and I also let them know what statehood uh, means. The end of taxation without representation for over 700,000 people. It finally would mean self-governance and that members of Congress who are sent to D.C. to represent uh, their people will not be overtaking the values of Washington, D.C. Plain and simple, it means justice for the District of Columbia. So, artists, I want to thank you by putting all of those feelings and sentiments into the art that we had the... Um, the privilege of showing during Art All Night, and we'll look for other ways to display it across the district. So with that, I want to welcome Director Whitfield to the podium, and then we'll have a moment for questions. Thank you, Mayor. I want to, I want to reiterate a thanks to Mayor Bowser for commissioning this art and for being the first mayor to do this for Art All Night. You know, we, we often say that small business is the, is the economic driver of our local economy. But I think we, this month, through 2 or 2 Creates, have also been talking about the, the, the creatives around our city. We know that art, art comes with a perspective. And for Art All Night this year, we, we asked the, the city, we said, what would statehood mean to you? 
and we ask our artist community to really engage with the community and, and bring those feelings to life. And the art does that, and the art talks about what it would mean. You know, this mayor said, I was born without representation, but I will not die without representation. And I think we all, we all want to champion, you know, we want to thank her for her championing this, this initiative for us. We want to thank her for letting our voices be heard. And we want to thank the artists for capturing. We had over 100,000 people come to Art All Night across the city. We crashed the website several times. We, uh, you know, the, the resounding... The resounding voice is, you know, we want statehood now, and our artists are capturing the fervency and the urgency of that message. You know, Chris and his whole team really are reflecting back the, the, the lack of patience that the artists and the city feel on this, and I think that we're excited to see this art put together. It was actually, and we tried, Mayor, we tried. It's too massive. It's too massive to bring to G Street, but it's going to be it's going to be installed, I think, up in the Reeves Center. And so when we bring that, please come and see the full thing. We want to really have a, a big shout out to Link Strategic Partners, and uh, and the, and the team there. Um, and then we have these shirts, Bailiwick and District Certified. We have these that the say to us, guys, the time is now. What do we want? Statehood. Statehood. When do we want it? Now. Um, so, so without further ado, I think we need to get to the, you know, get our Congress to get on board and let us know that from ZSLBD's perspective, it's been an honor to support this initiative. You know, Art All Night is the mayor's party. It's the mayor's art artistic party all, you know, all night long. The artists, the business community, and the city are here to reflect that the, the time has come, you know, to show we're ready. All right. Okay, questions, questions, press questions first, press questions, press questions. On this subject or any subject? Yep, I'll take your question. Um, so, Mayor, last night... I can't see you, Sam. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mayor, last night in the Columbia Heights neighborhood, there was a shooting, I think six people shot, one dead, perhaps uh, another in critical condition. What do you have to say about, about hey, the, the violence in this area? And when we were there, there was a bunch of whiskey bottles... Uh, Commemorating somebody else who died in that same Sam, time. I'll be at the location um, about 3 p.m. with our public safety officials, and we'll uh, give a full briefing. Um, needless to say, uh, we're outraged by senseless gun violence uh, in our city. Uh, we're outraged that any person um, with a gun would shoot indiscriminately into a, you know, a densely populated space. Uh, so we want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, I'm going to have our public safety officials brief out on exactly what we know and how we can uh, get the public's help in finding out who did this. Can you, I know your brief is on what the police are, are doing this afternoon at 3 o'clock, but can you tell us and tell citizens what you're doing other than the police department, what wraparound services, what are other agencies doing in the government to oh, curb no. this violence? Well, I can't get ahead on who the perpetrators are and what the cause of this incident was, Mark, because we'll have a little bit more to say about that later. Um, but we're making huge investments. I think you know the council has been very focused on uh, violence interrupters. Uh, we have an agency uh, that we contract with uh, in that area where this incident happened. I can't say what, you know, I, I don't know enough yet about the suspects to be able to say if that would have had an impact. Just overall violence, not this incident in particular, but just as far as mental health, uh, human services, other types of outreach that you think that you're targeting at, at curbing violence throughout the city. Can you give us kind of just an overview of what, what, what those tactics are? 
We uh, make huge investments in mental health services across the city. Uh, we have stood up, for example, a center at our D.C. jail to help uh, our citizens who are returning from time served to have the types of services that they need. Uh, but I think we also have to be focused on some of the root causes of violence, including uh, extreme poverty and people who don't have opportunities and how we're doing a better job at getting them opportunities. One, uh, a very intense program that hurt, uh, helps um, some of the people who are most vulnerable to being victims and most likely to be perpetrators is being op uh, operated out of our neighborhood services office. These are people who we think could be shooters, have been shooters. And we know if we can get them on a productive path, they could actually be leaders um, in their communities. So that is a, a program we continue to invest in. And I know Commander Green is here. Is there anything he could add to? No, we'll be briefing out um, at 3 o'clock. Thank you, everybody. I'll, I'll ask, you can step up and I'll answer your question. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.